Hey, hi, welcome back to our Cisco SD-WAN course. In this video, we'll discuss about the major and important terminologies which you need to get familiar with in Cisco SD-WAN. Just a moment. The playlist for this complete Cisco SD-WAN course is available in the description box below and also here in the cards. To encourage me, please do like, share and subscribe. Also hit the notification bell icon so my effort will reach you on time. The gray box you see here represents an managed router. On a high level, we can say that the managed router is segregated into three separate VPNs. In Cisco SD-WAN, VPN is nothing but BRFs in your traditional routers. We have a transport VPN, the red one in my slide. And uh, if you see, it also has an ID written, which is a VPN zero. The transport VPN is where we terminate all our WAN links, whether it is uh, MPLS or internet link, whatever it may be. They all will get terminated on this VPN if they are going to act as an SD-WAN transport. Also note, VPN zero number is dedicated to transport VPN. So if you hear me saying transport VPN or VPN zero, I'm talking about the VPN where the band links are getting terminated. Also note that uh, we always have only one transport VPN at any given time. The next is the service VPN. This is where the LAN links get connected. Say for example, your core switch in the site may terminate on this VPN. We can have multiple service VPN. Think in your office, if you have user machines and voice traffic, we can create one service VPN for the user data and one more service VPN for the voice. Then we will just assign them each with a different VPN number. The service VPN numbering can range from 1 to 511. I want to highlight one more thing here since the range of service VPN numbers can be between uh, 1 to 511. It doesn't mean that uh, we can create 511 service VPNs in our router. The routers depending on the hardware or license can support only a limited number of service VPNs. But you are free to use any of these numbers between 1 to 511 for them. Out of band management VPN or the OOB VPN in short, right, is nothing but an uh, external connectivity to a box, right? Out of band management connectivity. It doesn't really have any other functionalities. The number dedicated to this VPN is VPN 512. Let's start with the most common terminologies of Cisco SD-WAN, which you need to grip to follow me throughout this course easily. First one is the transport side. This we have discussed in the previous slide. This is the place where the WAN links get connected. Also, we will call these connectivities as the underlay connectivity or underlay network because only on top of this path, the SD-WAN routers will form the overlay tunnels, right? The IPsec tunnel or the DTLS tunnel, whatever it may be. This transport VPN is always the VPN zero and this is where the traffic gets encrypted and tunneled to the other sites. Also, there is options where we can say not to tunnel some specific traffic, rather send them natively on the WAN link. This is called as DIA, Direct Internet Access in Cisco SD-WAN terms. We have separate videos for this DIA as well, where we can definitely check this out in our lab. Service VPN. This is the one connecting to the LAN side. The VPN numbering can range between 1 to 511 and 512 is reserved for OOB, just like the way in which uh, VPN 0 is reserved for the transport. Here in service VPN, we will see the actual or original traffic from the LAN. This is one important term that I want you to understand, T-Log. You can think of this as an identity card, right, uh, given uh, to, you, to a WAN interface. Go back to your school days for a moment and think, what are the details your school identity card will have? Your name, with standard or maybe a section along with that, and also the school name, right? All these details make up your identity card and in turn, this identity card will give you a unique identification for you, isn't it? Same way, TLOC is a collection of system IP, color, private and public IP addresses of the WAN link. With this TLOC detail, we will be able to uniquely identify a WAN interface in a complete network. By the way, you might ask me, what is a system IP or color in first place? Just hold for a minute. We are going to talk about them separately. The V route. It is nothing but the routes available in service VPN. As we already discussed, VPN is nothing but VRFs, right? So every VPN will maintain their own separate routing table. This V route is also called as the service route. You will definitely hear me using the term service routes more often. OMP. This is an important one in Cisco SD1. OMP is the routing protocol which runs only between VH routers and vSmart devices. Using this OMP protocol, the vSmart exchange the routing updates between the sites. Not only that, 
policy details, IPsec keys, etc. are also shared using this protocol. Next is the site ID. It is just an identification given per site. If there is two routers, say for example in a site, both will be assigned with the same site ID by which the Cisco SD1 can understand that they both belong to the same site and there will be no IPsec tunnel the data plane tunnel right formed between them not only that site ID is used when writing policies as well system IP system IP is nothing but an router ID for Cisco SD1 components every device starting from vManage vSmart vBond the Vanage routers everyone have a unique system IP assigned to them if you are familiar with the router ID concept in uh, OSPF, BGP or any other routing protocols, this is the equivalent here in Cisco sd -band. It is a 32-bit dotted decimal value looking like an IP address. We have talked about OMP protocol in the last slides, right? Say for example, when an OMP neighborship is formed between a Vantage router and a vSmart, it is formed between this system IP addresses. Organization name is something which is uh, assigned to every component in the Cisco sd one network and it should be exactly the same throughout the Cisco sd one overlay. It is definitely case sensitive. This value will come into picture when sd one components authenticate between them for control connection formation. There is also one more thing which I haven't mentioned in the slide that is the SP organization name which is the service provider organization name. This term will come into picture when we are enabling a complete end to end multi-tenant Cisco sd one setup. Thanks for watching the video. Hope it was informative. Do comment below for any queries or suggestions. The playlist for this complete Cisco SD1 course is available in the description box below and also here in the cards. If you want to encourage me, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. If you think some of your friends or colleagues will find my content or channel useful, do share and also do not forget to hit the notification bell icon.